Hey, we're going to be looking at paper one from the May 2013 exams for RT. Um, so yeah, we're going to take a question by question. So we're going to start with the, the SQL question, or SQL as we do it in our country. As you can see, um, they give you all the details of the database and all that, and there you can see the tables. We've got a customers table with details about customers. We've got an orders table with the details about orders, and then order prints with quantity and file and um, file size and all that. Obviously, to do with a photo type of company, you can all read through those data and all that. There's our interface, which is very similar to what we've got, and we're going to write the code for the buttons. So let's go to the first question. Okay, first question for button A, we must complete the code for, we want to display, now they list everything you need to know, so just be aware of that. We want the customer number, the surname, the title, and points of all female clients, and don't forget the sorted part alphabetically. So, we're going to first list what we want, so we're going to go to the Delphi, and that's the button that we obviously want to do it, button A. And they write, as I said, they got most of the code here for you, we just have to fill in the SQL string over here. So I'm going to type in, yeah. So we're going to obviously select. And we what are the things that we want to select? Okay, so let's just double check what we want. We want the customer number, customer surname. Please, please take note of the field names. If you're not sure, you can always open the database to get the field name. So let's go over here. So the customer number. Oh, I've got caps lock on, so take that off. Um, we need the customer surname, we need the customer title, and we need the customer points. Okay, just make sure that your spelling is correct with the fields that are in the database. There we can see we've got everything that we want. Um, and then we also need to write our condition. Now you can write this all in one statement if you want, or you can have multiple strings which add onto each other. I'm going to just write it on one statement over here. So we're going to type in here yeah, from which table. We're going to get it from the customers table. And then we put in our condition where... And remember, it must be for females. Now, how do we know that it's a female? So if you're not sure, you can always just go to the database. So there's our database. We can always just go into the database. And I'm going to open the customer table. There's no female um, file or field here. But I do see Mr. and Mrs. And there's no Miss. So there's, only, there's the only two options. So I'm assuming that female must be a Mrs. So that's what I'm going to do for the Delphi over here. So where... And we're going to look for customer title is equal to, this is, remember to put that in double quotes. Um, and you might think we finished, but not remember we said we we're going to sort this. So I'm going to, on a new line, uh, remember to put a space there, especially if you're going to construct a string, to put a space so that it doesn't conflict with the next string that you add on. So I'm going to add on to it. And I'm going to add on the order we're going to order bar and we want it in alphabetical order so obviously we're going to be ordering by the customer surname okay there we go it should all work then obviously the sql text will be set there and made to active so let's run it and see what it does no errors that's a good sign and there we go okay happy we're now going to be looking at question 2 or 1.2 for the button B. We want to do the code. We must list the number and the full name and the points of all the customers whose first name starts with the letter MA and who have more than 2,500 points. Um, they give us a big clue there. Take, take note of the column headings. So we must be aware of that because we're obviously going to have to change certain things. Okay, so let's go into it. First of all, you'll see here that it's a full name. So we want both the fir first name and the surname, and we're going to have to construct that string um, in SQL. So let's go to the SQL. We're going to go to our button B over here. We'll write the code over here. So over here, obviously, we're going to select the fields that we want again. And again, we're going to need the customer number because that was the first field that they wanted. We're going to, Now, here's where the tricky part is. We're going to have the customer name and the customer surname as full name. Okay, so we've got customer name and 
customers if we look there exactly just to make sure that it's correct in one in one piece so let's go back here so we're gonna obviously put a space there so we're gonna put a plus a space there and then we're gonna plus the surname customer surname and we're gonna have that as a calculated field and we're gonna call that as full name so that will combine customer name and surname with a space in between in one field that could be called full name. Okay, so we've got that and we also need the customer points. Okay, put a space at the end just to make sure it works. Now we're going to make another string. And we're going to add onto it the SQL string. Plus, now we need to add in all the customers whose name, or first of all, before we get to the conditions, we actually need to specify which table we're getting this from, obviously from the customers table. Now our conditions, where we are aware. We've got two conditions. The first thing was that the customer name must start with MA. So that in that case, we're going to use the like option, and we're going to use MA like that. Now in Access, we would normally use a star, but because we're doing it in Delphi, we have to use the percent sign. So that's why I put that in double quote. So that means anything starting with MA, ending with nothing or anything. So that's the one condition. The other condition is that the customer points had to be greater than 2,500. Always make sure that they don't mean inclusive. So if we look there, they just refer to more than. So that we know it's just greater than. It's not greater than equal to. So where the points are greater than 2,500. And that should be the end of our query, and we can close it over there. So we're going to save it. Let's see if it runs. There's a little error there. What is the error? They're looking. Oh, okay. Unterminated string. I probably haven't terminated something. Ah, oh, I've used double quotes instead of single quotes. Just remember, in Access, inside here, we're going to use double quotes referring to strings. But when we refer in Delphi, remember to use the single quotes. And don't forget your semicolons. There we go. You can see customer name. You can see our constructed string with both the first name and the surname and then the points. Okay. On to question 1.3. Now, this one it wants us to list the total number of orders placed per customer. Now, the moment we want total number, I'm already starting to think of those special functions like you get like um, count and sum and average and all that. And straight away, because it's a lot of fields and it's based on all of the customer numbers, so we're taking the customer numbers, CN, triple O, and counting or totaling all the numbers ordered for that particular scenario. We know we're going to have a grouped bar in our um, SQL. We're going to be grouping it according to this with the calculation field. If we didn't have the group bar, then we wouldn't be able to display two things. We would only be able to display one thing. So let's go to 1.3. In the code, we're going to come over here, we're going to write the code. So we obviously want to display the customer number. So there we have the customer number. And now we're going to use the count field. We're going to count all of the customer numbers. So we can see how the total number that are with that customer number. And that, remember, we're going to use as, it's a field that they've specified the particular name. So you can see their number of orders placed. So that's what we must call it. So we come to our code and go as number of orders placed. Okay. And then don't forget we must specify um, our where clause, which I'm going to write in a new string over here. So we're going to add on to the string. And then we're going to add that it's from the customers tables. Luckily, we've still been using one table. So from the customers table, actually, it's not from the customers table. That, if you check correctly, if you look at our database, there's nothing over here. We want to find out the actual number of orders, how many orders were placed. If you read the question carefully, it says that's the number of orders. So just be careful of that. It would be tempting to go to the customer table, but it's actually the orders table. So we're going to get that from the orders table. And then we remember to group by customer number. Okay. And we can have our single quote and semicolon. Okay. Now this should work. So hopefully there are no errors. There we go. 
total orders per customer. There we go. And the data looks very similar to that in the diagram. Now just to show you, if I didn't have this order bar, if I just ended over there, it wouldn't work because at the moment you are using an aggregate function with another field based on certain criteria. You need to group it. Um, if I didn't have customer number, then it would just count all the customer numbers in that order. But the moment you wanted the count based on a particular grouping or, or criteria, then you need to use the group bar because if I run this, it's going to give me some sort of error in SQL. It's going to go, oops, sorry for you. So just be aware of that. So you need, the moment you're doing aggregate functions with something, you know that straight away you're going to have a group bar and that group bar will be whatever this first field is. Okay. Now for question 1.4. Um, this one's quite a big one. It's eight marks, and we know we've got a lot of coding to do for it. Uh, we need to list the customer number, name, surname, order date of all customers who were helped by this person, Bongi, on the 8th of November 2010. Okay, so now here's the key. We've got the customer number, the name, the surname. So we want all the customer details, but who were helped by Bongi. Now if we look at our table, the only way that we know who, who helped who was in the orders table. So straight away we are seeing that we're going to have a combination of the orders table with the customer table. So we need to combine them. So I come here to the button and we're going to write the code for it. So we're going to have obviously from two different tables. So we're going to start with our select. Now we need the customer um, number and we need the customer um, name and surname and obviously we're going to get that from the customer table. Um, so we can say it's customer customers dot customer number we also know that we've got customers dot customers surname or name and surname name first then customers dot surname okay so that's what we're getting from the customer um, database um, or table sorry we're now going to get the order date and the who post it obviously from the orders table so at this point we're going to start going orders dot order date you can always check in the database to see that your fields are correct um, and we're also going to need the orders dot processed bar Okay, you can always double check your fields to see that they are correct and they are spelled correctly and all that. Um, so we got that. Uh, so that's the first part. Now we need to specify the next part of our string. Um, so we're going to add on to it. Uh, so we're adding on where did we get this information from? We obviously from we got it from the customers table. Remember, don't use double quotes. Use single quotes from the customers table as well as the orders table okay and now we have our where clause clauses now we've got now they've told us technically two conditions but there's actually a third one um, we need to have not only the order date and who process but we also need to because we're using two tables we need to join them so I'm gonna do the join first so it's gonna be the customers table now the field that joins the two together is obviously the customer number is in both of them so that's the field that actually joins them so customers dot customer number let's use a dot, dot customer number must equal the orders dot customer number and at the same time the orders dot processed bar must equal in double quotes bongi I'm going to just keep typing just to save time. And at the same time, our orders dot order date must equal. Now remember, because we're dealing with a date, we need to use the hash hashes. So it's the 11th of the 8th, 2010. And close the hash. Remember, when you're using dates, you use the hashes around it. And that should be our, qu our query. Now if I run it, hopefully there are no errors. And we can go help our bongi. There's an error. Now it says the customer's surname. Obviously that's an error, so we need to change that. So let me close this. So customer's surname, it's actually cust surname. 